I can say something. Who here has a female in their life that they respect and love? Raise your hands. A female in their life that they love and respect. So you raise your hands. That's what this is all about. The reason you raise your hands is the reason why we exist. Because we found that what we see in the media right now, a lot of what we see does not respect our women mm -hmm. the way they should be respected. So what Sisters in Harlem is about is to bring what we know, the traditions that we have, mm -hmm. the history that we have, and use that to show the world what we think about women. But if you remove all the women from the planet, everything will cease to exist within 60 years. Culture. So why are you disrespecting the tree and using the fruit? So Sisters in Harmony is about exactly what sisters in harmony. It doesn't say sisters, black sisters in harmony, or white sisters in harmony, or Asian sisters in harmony. It says sisters in harmony. What we are doing, we are going to show the world what we and how we respect the tree. If you look at the poses that we do, that's what it's about. Tall, short, light skin, dark skin, plus size, <coughs> young, old. It's not about what you see on the back. It's about what came back, what came through the middle passage, and what was left for us. See, we went, to, we went to Savannah, Georgia yesterday, and we got a tremendous part of the history. So now, I got more to play. Don't give me something, but I'm going to use it. <laughs> So what we are doing by the business partner Ruby is actually we have close to 400 members worldwide, 35 states and about seven countries right now. And members and supporters. We saw this journey, we didn't see that. Be, 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 be consciously aware that as you move in the you know, that God, you go this way and God wants you to go that way, you better go where God's hands push you or else you know, it ain't gonna happen. Our idea was to do something really cool with group. And God said, go ahead, do your group. Start the group in 09. And now, as we get ready, the last six months, 2000, we're looking at the program of 400 in this robot. We have a radio program. We have all kinds of stuff. We're proud of that, but we know that's God's work. God's hand working through us. We thank you for coming tonight because what you're going to experience tonight is a photo shoot for the next five minutes to project. What you're going to experience tonight is how can you take your skills and your talents and use it to elevate your community. Because everyone here has a voice. How are you going to take your voice? Do two ways. You can't do both. You can't have two masters. Right, Queen? You can't have two masters. Either you're going to serve on a positive tip, or you're going to serve on a negative tip. The negativity you have ain't going to happen. You're not going to, you're not, you're going to cease to exist. The positive tip, you want to leave a legacy. You see, Queen's born in the legacy. Before her was her mom, before her mom was her grandma. The legacy will take us back to the motherland. Like it or not. We take it to Savannah where we, yesterday we, we had a, uh, a tour guide, a journey guide, mm -hmm. took us on a journey. Mm -hmm. and we and told about some tremendous things. It is up to us. Don't look for your neighbor to do it. It is up to you to take your skills as rappers, models, and to show your community what can be done. That is your voice, your vote. You are the power of one. Rosa Parks is the power of one. Dr. King was the power of one. Look what they did. Think about it. Dr. King did all he did before he was 20, he started before he was 25 years old. Before he was 40, he was done. So all that stuff he did, Malcolm, same thing. All that stuff they did, they started before they were 30 years old. So don't let no one tell you you're too young. Okay? What's in your heart, God put it there, and you're going to use it to elevate yourself or destroy yourself. The choice is yours. It's really yours. You know, as I step into my 50s now, I look back at all of a sudden my parents <coughs> and told me, and I'm like, wow, my son is older. So if you hear something from one, of the, from one of the young elders or one of the elders and it doesn't make sense to you now, put it in your back pocket. 
guarantee you a thing, a cycle of seven years, you will use it. You won't use it. You won't come back. So systems and harmony is just about that, about putting more positive images of women back into the community on a mental, physical, and spiritual level. That's what we're about. Take those three things that you have in yourself. If you remove any one of those three things, you cease to exist as a true human. You just be a, a shell walking on the streets. You, you see shells out there all the time. The unfortunate thing, there are a lot of shells right now come right, right now, right now, communities. It's time that we need you young people to step forward. And it's our job as elders to give you something to use. Positive. I challenge all the young people, here they all the young people, to bring something positive to us to our table. If I cannot use it, I'll call an elder. Elder, I have a young person doing this. Boom, boom, boom. The philosophy we had in Africa is if you do six degrees of separation, a lot of people use it to understand. Within six degrees, everything you need is there. Every degree is a person. If I take you with six people, your six people have six people, they people have six people, and you have everything you need. You don't need a hundred people, you have six. That's an African tradition that corporate America has used in billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So think about it. Think about what we're doing here tonight. Think about tomorrow what you're going to tell your friends. Think about Monday what you're going to tell your friends, what you did. My partner, you asked her, she's a, she, she writes books. To tell your stories out is that it is our job to tell our story with the, with the um, passion and the skill that God has given us. I just want to say that because um, tonight will be very special. It's my third trip to Charleston. And um, I'm learning a lot. We're going to come back. We're going to be back. I got a spiritual mother here. And, um, I, I enjoy coming here. I know the really enjoys coming here too. And um, I thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, please, if you have any questions, I'm more happy to answer your questions. Show me that. Cypher is a sphere of existence, a space on the circle. I bring it up now because he just told you how many degrees? Six. Six. A circle consists of how many degrees? Six. No. 360. All right. Six goes into 360. How many? She said it before. 60. All right. Everything is numerical in a sphere. Your world is a big sphere. All right. Your world is the cipher in which the energy that you put out will always, what? Come full circle, exactly. Always comes back. So that's one of the things. You In this world, you have to be prepared. I'm a computer scientist. There's a statement in computer science, garbage in, garbage out. You, you hear somebody say, ego. That just means garbage in, garbage out. You can't usually get good stuff out if you don't put good stuff in. So the whole point is, and your sphere, your cipher that Erica Badu was talking about, the cipher, hers goes on and on and on and on. But there's a lot of depth to the words she's saying because she's trying to enlighten <coughs> minds. And many people just got caught up in a beat. Mm -hmm but they had no knowledge of what her words meant. But if you're saying to me, you are singers, you are rappers, you want to be queen, you have titles, you also then will end up speaking. And whatever you speak is what you'll have. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. But speak not of that which you know nothing. You see? So it doesn't make sense to sing a song and you don't even know what they're talking about. Because you could be speaking your death into existence. You won't even know what they say. You see? Now the reason why when plenty of us, I heard just about everybody in this room, was only a handful who didn't say they were actually born in South Carolina or raised in South Carolina. So that means most of the children, and yeah, the people are crying your teeth like this year, now why have we been a praying to y'all? Then say, yeah, man, yes, yeah, no, I got Y'all want to say that if y'all don't stand tall out. Okay? But for years, because others could not under or overstand the government language, which is a code of the spirit, they were part of our cipher. 
They weren't part of our circle of existence. So for them, they thought it was bad what we were doing. But then when they thought they understood a little, and that's why I say a little bit of knowledge is dangerous, then they uh, exploited it. The same thing he's pointing out, about six degrees of separation. That has been exploited. It's been a Broadway play. It became a Hollywood movie. People started then using the terminology everywhere, like the African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. That got exploited all over the place politically and everywhere, where these people had no idea what a village even looked like. <laughs> and a village for us is a cipher. It is a circle. Our family compounds, as y'all say, out in the country, right? I bet you, if you look out for your mama porch, your mama got a porch in, in Hollywood. You look out across your mama porch, who else you look at? Cross on you, an auntie or cousin or somebody, any of them. And if you look this your way, you don't look at none of the rest of the family fears. And if you look that way, they don't look all at you and you say, Great God, God, what I get from running y'all, man. I can't put that in. <laughs> that that don't we circle. Up. But why do you look? And why do you don't look? Because you will see what the other rest are putting in the circle. Because you know what coming in the middle of the week affect all of you with this. That would decipher about and see too many years when you don't know it, somebody else will say to you the wrong answer and sell it to you too. And have you buy the error. That's right. Even if it's about your own culture and your own community. And that's the error that's been bought that the brother's talking about, about women. That women can't be in harmony. That sisters cannot survive together. That there is no cipher that connects us as women. Everywhere I go in the world, when Elder Town mentioned the United Nations, the women of the world surround me. I've had women that are from cultures where they don't get to talk really in public. So the men, even if the women know the answer, the men have to get up there and say it. Mm -hmm. And when I suddenly get called up to speak, all I do is watch the women's faces. Because without them saying a word, they give me the look. <laughs> like, I can't talk, but she's sure talking for me right now. And I remember walking in the ladies' room. Y'all remember that song? It's a meeting in the ladies' room? Mm -hmm. And it was a meeting in the ladies' room. Because okay. all of those women were so proud to be in the ladies' room and get an opportunity to talk to me priests about all they know, about their cultures, their community, the pride they have, and how they thanked me for being a woman that was out here in this arena full of men to speak out, even though their cultures hadn't arrived at the point that they respected women doing that in their cultures. So you see, you got to be ready all the time. So your cipher got to keep going on and on and on and on, telling the story, because that's what Brother Moja is talking about. What is the legacy that you leave behind? Y'all know y'all go to homeboy and everybody want the obituary. And y'all sit there on up to, to the people repass and yam and all the food and then I talk about them. And then y'all talk about, great God, I ain't been no so and so if do all that. Great God, this your thing say, if we do this, y'all, and if we do this, y'all, and if we part of this, y'all, I ain't the first know that. Because more often than not, we don't appreciate people in our communities until they go. But you have the opportunity now to change that and appreciate those of us who are still in, as we say, the land of the living, and make sure that your living is not in vain.